Lovely to look at, delightful to hold. <laughs> Here, quick, Florida, take these. I have had it with modern science. Get rid of every one of these aerosol cans. I don't want a single one left in the house. What happened? I just sprayed my hair with lemon pledge. <laughs> Right side. You won't have to dust your head no more than twice. Oh, that is not funny. My hair smells like a knotty pine bedpost. <laughs> oh, honey, you didn't have to polish this just because Viv and Arthur are coming to dinner. But it was dull. So is dinner with Vivian and Arthur. <laughs> well, they can't help that, Mrs. Friendly. They didn't know. Oh, I know. And I swear, if they behave like two puppies in heat again tonight, <laughs> I'm gonna throw a bucket of water on them. <laughs> Go ahead. Say it. Say what? But I forgot. Well, I didn't. This morning after breakfast, you told me to pick something up for you on the way home. And in spite of the fact that you'll say I always forget, well, memory of an elephant. Honey, I'm so proud of you. Mm. You remembered Philadelphia cream cheese. I remembered Philadelphia cream cheese. No, I remembered Boston cream pie. <laughs> Oh, Walter, that's wonderful. I'll put a little horseradish in the Boston cream pie. It'll oh. make a fabulous dip for the Fritos. Oh, for crying out loud, Maud, I know it was an Eastern city with cream after it. And besides, Boston and Philadelphia are only 300 miles apart. That's close enough. I suppose I should be grateful he didn't bring home the London flu. <laughs> Miss Finley, is it all right if I leave now? I want to get home to see the Harlem Globetrotters. Of course. <laughs> the Harlem Globetrotters? I didn't know you were interested in basketball. I'm talking about my aunt and uncle. They just come back home from a trip around the world. <laughs> the Harlem Globetrotters. <laughs> Good night. Maud, what if Vivian and Arthur coming? Too soon. <laughs> and I'm warning you, Walter, if they start spouting poetry at each other, I may hit Arthur with a Boston cream pie cheese dip. <laughs> well, don't complain to me. That's your Frankenstein. If it hadn't been for you, they never would have gotten together. Honey, I know that, and that's why I'm having them over for dinner tonight. <laughs> Walter Vivian is my best friend, and she finally has a man in her life. That is very important to me, Walter. Even if the man is Arthur, and the two of them together are about as scintillating as a commercial for Preparation H. <laughs> Come on, Maud. So they're a little affectionate. Well, get ready. Our two favorite lovebirds, Bill and Coo. <laughs> you know, the way they're always groping each other, I wonder what they're using to ring the doorbell. <laughs> Uh, Vivian, Vivian. Uh, hi there, Marty. Hi, Walter. Uh, we were just... Uh, oh, three... just forget it, Arthur. And humph to you, Vivian. Just humph. <laughs> Did you hear that? They're arguing like two human beings. <laughs> All right, you two. Now, what is going on? Don't ask me, Marty. All I know is that for no reason at all, I'm suddenly an ogre, a monster, a... Creep. <laughs> Vivian, you engage me in repartee, and you will be cut to pieces. I gave away a bird that could ad lib better than you. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah? <laughs> you really cut her to pieces with that one. I will never understand women. There's only one woman I ever really understood, and that was my Agnes. Oh, Arthur? In 15 years, I only once heard her say an unkind thing, and that was to a dentist whose Masonic ring was pressing against her nose. Arthur, Arthur nobody really cares about Agnes. You see, she, that, she puts down everything I have to say. Arthur, so help me. You know, Vivian, there is something I have to get in the kitchen. What? You. <laughs> okay, Vivian, what you? Well, what am I going to do with him? You heard him out there. What Look, am I going to do with him? You are my best friend, and I know that I have to calm you down and help you with this matter, or you're going to hate yourself in the morning. And Vivian, the way you look in the morning, I wouldn't push my luck. <laughs> All right, it's that wife of his, Agnes. Agnes? Agnes has been dead for eight years. I know, I know, and I could kill her for that. <laughs> he won't stop talking about her. I'm competing with a woman who was perfect in every way. Yeah, except for her health, Vivian. <laughs> he's, he's so insensitive.
I bought him a tie to go with that suit he's I wearing. I noticed it the minute he walked in. Excellent taste. He's wearing a tie Agnes gave him. And it's atrocious. <laughs> But the suit is in excellent taste. Oh, Viv, come on now. Honey, you have to realize you are the first woman that Arthur has been seriously attracted to since Agnes. I mean, you have to give him a little time to get over his romantic fantasies of loving her and get down to the harsh realities of loving you. <laughs> Really think so, of huh? course. Now come on, honey. Do he mentions Agnes every once in a while? I want you to go back in there and show Arthur how cheerful and smiling you can be. I'll try. Okay. Now remember, I want you to be cheerful and smiling, and cute and perky. Now cancel the cute and perky. We'll go with the cheerful. <laughs> Get the broccoli. I tell you, Walter, I never dreamed that our first fight would be like this. I thought at least it'd be a little love and understanding. Okay, and... look, so you had a little misunderstanding, but don't ruin your entire evening. She's going to come around. Uh. Just be your old, witty, debonair self. Oh, Walter. Well, come on, Arthur. Do it for me. I can't. I... Oh, come on. Your old, debonair self. Huh? <laughs> witty, debonair. <laughs> I'll do it. After all, I got quite an investment in that woman. I got 10 pounds of prime beef stored in a frozen food locker. <laughs> Hold it right there. Standing there with a duck in your hand. You remind me of a poem. Summer, winter, spring, fall. Thou art the fairest flower of all. Oh, <laughs> that's lovely, Arthur. <laughs> Just a rhyming rhetoric I cooked up. I think you left it on a little too long. <laughs> hey, Maude. Maude, you know your hair smells like the coffee table? I know, Walter, I know. Not all of us can be the fairest flower of them all. Some of us are wood byproducts. Well, how about letting the skilled hands of a surgeon do the carving? Scalpel? Forceps? Here we go. Oh, too late. That bird is a dead duck. I put it another way. That duck's goose is cooked. <laughs> Did you just make that up? No, not really. That's the routine I used to do for Agnes. Oh. Uh, the routine you used to do for Agnes. Uh, cheerful, baby. Cheerful. <laughs> Remember, Walter, when I used to carve duck and I'd go quack, 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 and Agnes would laugh? Then when I carved turkey, I'd go gobble, 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 gobble. Agnes would laugh. Agnes would laugh. Agnes, Agnes, Agnes. She can't hear you, baby. Now sit down. <laughs> No, I've had it with Agnes. Now what's wrong? Arthur, you are in love with a dead woman and I can't fight it anymore. Come on now, you're, you're getting absolutely hysterical over nothing. I am not getting hysterical. Now come on, let the man carve. Now what's this all about? I'll tell you what it's all about. It's all about Arthur and his precious Agnes. Agnes this, Agnes that. It's a wonder you didn't have her stuffed and mounted over your mantle. <laughs> Vivian, I'm shocked. That's against the law. <laughs> It just so happens that Agnes was cremated and her ashes were scattered over Mamaronac. Yes, and if you ask me, over Mamaronac. <laughs> yes, her father had a live bait store in Mamaronac. She spent many happy hours there. Here you go again. Agnes, Agnes, Agnes. Oh, come on. For heaven's sake, Vivian. Now, when Walter and I first started going together, I was constantly mentioning my previous husband, Albert. Walter never objected. Well, if you don't believe me, ask him. He's an expert on the subject. Well, frankly, I think Vivian is right. What do you know? <laughs> if you have nothing intelligent to contribute, then just get out of the conversation. <laughs> well, I can see how Arthur's mentioning Agnes all the time could really drive Vivian up a wall. Thank you, Walter. You're welcome, Vivian. Mine is right, Walter, as usual. Thank you, Walter. You're welcome. <laughs> Walter, I do not mention Agnes all the time. And I thank the Lord that there's one person that isn't here tonight to hear this stupid conversation, and that's my Agnes. All right, you did it again. I'm fed up. I am fed, 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 fed up, 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 up. And as for you, Arthur Harmon, I will never go out with a widower again, unless his wife is still alive. <laughs> Frankly, Walter, I don't care for your attitude. <laughs> and in fact, Walter, but being witty and debonair did me. And speaking of fact, look at your duck. A fine evening this turned out to be. A vindictive woman and a fat duck. Well, 
Well, Arthur and Vivian are gone. They'll probably never speak to each other again. You see what you did? <laughs> what I did? Come on, Maud, get off my back. Vivian had a perfect right to be fed up. Oh, come on. Vivian was behaving completely irrationally and stupid, which she got from you. <laughs> Vivian's reaction was perfectly natural. Vivian's getting hysterical over Agnes was perfectly natural? That's right. It was perfectly natural. Oh. Like the way I felt about this house when I moved in. I mean, Arthur's just gonna have to realize that and bear with Vivian until they can work Walter. out their problems together. Walter, what about this house? What house? This house. Your feelings about this house. Nothing. It was nothing. <laughs> Look, this is a marvelous house. I mean, it's got a great floor plan, a lot of windows, a nice neighborhood more than the garbage picked up twice a week. You haven't told me what... <laughs> <laughs> come back with not as you tell me what you got to A crisis in our marriage, and all you can think about is your duck. <laughs> what crisis? It's just that I resented moving into this house. That's all. Now, come on, I'm hungry. Give me my duck. <laughs> Walter, you have lived in this house for five years and hated it? I don't hate it, Maud. It's just that before me, you lived in this house with another husband, Albert. <laughs> so it finally comes out. Five years in this house, and you've been constantly thinking, Albert, Albert, Albert. Maud, believe me. Look, it used to bother me at first, but it doesn't anymore. Now the name Albert never enters my mind. Never. Oh, Walter. If I could believe that, I'd be the, I'd be the happiest wife in the world. Then you are the happiest wife in the world. Really, Walter? I swear it, Albert. <laughs> More. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. I didn't mean that. I mean, that just came out like that. More. I, look, what are you doing with that duck? I'm getting rid of it so it won't remind you of Albert. <laughs> Lord, everything else in this house may have belonged to Albert, but that duck was mine. <laughs> I don't want to hear about the house. You obviously hate the house. Lord, you're misunderstanding everything. So I happen to mention Albert's house. Did I say one word about Albert's chair, about Albert's desk? About Albert's rugs? Ah, I know what's bothering you. And it is not Albert's chair or Albert's desk or Albert's rug. It is Albert's bedroom. <laughs> and you might as well hate the guest room because that's where Albert spent the last six months of our seven-month marriage. <laughs> Are you implying that I'm jealous of Albert Moore? Well, I am not jealous. Oh, come on, of course you're jealous, Walter. You're so green, your mustache looks like AstroTurf. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute, stop with that. Sit down quietly, because I want to talk to you. Sweetheart, listen, when we got married, I wanted the joy and the excitement of the two of us discovering our house together. Our house. I mean, exploring the kitchen, you know, and deciding what color to paint it, imagining, like, where the furniture would go, and then buying the furniture. That's all I meant, honey. Well, why didn't you mention this before we got married, dearest? I mean, I would have understood this, darling. Oh, come on now, sweetie. You should have known how I felt about this all along, honey bunch. <laughs> how precious. Was it written in a fortune cookie I missed? <laughs> you didn't trust me. You did not trust me, Walter, to understand how you felt. Lord, it had nothing to do with trusting you. I was going to tell you, but uh, the weeks went by and they turned into months. Well, you seem to be so happy here, so I accepted it and I learned to live with it. Like a man with a goiter. <laughs> you learn to live with a two-story goiter. <laughs> Walter, how could you keep it from... How could you keep from the woman you loved something that was eating your heart out? I learned to live with it, and I love it, so shut up! I don't want to talk about this lousy place anymore! <laughs> Last night, kick Albert's table. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, kick it! Kick Albert's table! What? You want to kick Albert's table? Kick Albert's table! If it'll make you any happier, I will kick Albert's table! Ouch! Ooh. I mean, did you hurt yourself? Yeah! Good, that was Chester's table, not Oh, for crying out loud! Boy, where are you going? To the van! Albert's day! <laughs> Oh, Arthur, what do you want? I need your help. Arthur, will you go home? Moore and I are having a battle that makes yours and Vivian's look like a pajama party. But, Walter, you gotta help me. Where's your Epsom salt? Now Vivian won't even talk to me. You're lucky. 
I called her three times and she wouldn't answer. And she called me to tell me she was so upset she needed a tranquilizer. So I rushed right over. She took the tranquilizer and slammed the door in my face. I got so angry I banged the door. Ten minutes ago, that was the delicate hand of a skilled surgeon. If that swelling doesn't go down, I'm liable to lose two appendectomies and a gallbladder. Oh, sir. Well, gallbladders don't grow on treason. Oh, hi there, Marty. Try it out loud, boy. What are you looking for? Albert's hammer. What are you going to use it on? The justice of the peace who married us. <laughs> How do you like that, Arthur? For five years, I buried my feelings, or I won't hurt the woman I love. And then you come along and talk about Agnes, and you hurt Vivian's feelings. And I talk about Albert, and I hurt Maud's feelings. Take it from me, Arthur. Do yourself a favor, and don't get married again. Be married again? There's no chance of that, old buster. No more marriage for old Arthur Q. Harmon. Arthur Q. Harmon? <laughs> for Quince, my father was fond of tropical fruits. <laughs> Well, I hope that's something of Albert she's banging on. What are you doing? Can't you tell? I'm building a stairway to the stars. <laughs> Mark me and you'll hurt yourself. Now look, Mort, about the house. I don't want to hear another word about the house. There. Now what's this sign for? Our front lawn. Daisy, <laughs> we're not selling this house. You hate this house, we will sell this house. Are you trying to make me feel guilty? Okay, then sell the house for all I care. I'll even help you drive the stake in. You'll help me drive the stake in? Okay, well, fool. And the two of us will live in Transylvania. And we will become Dracula. I'm married to a five foot ten suitcase. I will put the sign out myself. I'm the real estate person. I will sell the house. Oh, oh, Mom, i got to talk to you. I'm so upset. Oh, I'm so sorry. Dave. Oh, uh, thank you, Mom. Now that we've had our little chat and you're feeling better, go home. <laughs> oh, you're not putting that phone on! Come here. Arthur! Was that you, Arthur? Arthur! All right, Arthur. Arthur, I think it's time we had this... What happened to my baby's hand? I punched your door. <gasps> right in the knocker. Oh, oh, <laughs> Let Vivian kiss it and make it better. Is that better? You know, that does feel better? Oh. It really does. Oh, oh Vivian, with a woman like you around, who needs Epsom salts? What do you mean? I do, I do, I really do. Oh. Stop seeing each other. How can you say that, Vivian? Well, because it's true. How can we have a meaningful relationship when you can't even bury Agnes? Vivian, if I could find her, I'd bury her. I really mean that. The only reason I keep mentioning Agnes is because she's all I've ever had until I met you. Oh, Arthur, if only I could believe that, I'd marry you in a minute. Believe it, Vivian, believe it. Arthur? Yeah? Arthur, you just made me the happiest woman in the world. <laughs> Walter, that sign stays out on the lawn. Only if this house is moved. Walter, don't oh, start. Oh, Mom, Ma, you're not going to believe this. Arthur and I are engaged. We're going to be married. Oh, honey, that's wonderful. Uh, Vivian. Uh, uh, Vivian. <laughs> Congratulations are in order. I don't know. Vivian and I were in the uh, kitchen and we were talking there and then she seemed to you pick mean, up. The... You really are getting married. Yes, yes. I, I, I can hardly believe it. No, I can't either. <laughs> I can't either. Oh, Walter, they really are going to get married. I hope it wasn't something I said. <laughs> we're actually engaged. <laughs> I don't know where I got the nerve to ask you. <laughs> well, it looks like the four of us will be next door neighbors. Next door neighbors? Well, naturally, we're going to move into my house. It's bigger than your house. It has everything we need. Oh, well, uh, of course, if, if you really feel that way. Come along, my I, I dear. Thought... I want to show you something. I want to show you something I have never shown you before. You are going to love Agnes' sewing room. I haven't touched a thing except to oil the machine every year on our anniversary. Come on. Is that what I did to you? It wasn't that bad. Albert didn't own a sewing machine. 
<laughs> oh, honey, I am so sorry. But I was pretty stupid. Oh. Seeing Arthur and Vivian makes me realize how lucky we are. Maud, it's not a house or furniture that make a home. We could live in a tent in the backyard. We could live in the garage, any place. And it'd be our home because we'd be there together. Oh, honey, you're right. You're right, Walter. And Walter, we've been together all over this house. We fought in that corner. And we fought in that we corner. We fought upstairs. And we fought in the basement. We threw dishes in the kitchen. And we threw phonograph records in the den. We threw suitcases out the window. And you flushed my eyelashes down the jar. <laughs> Oh, honey. Honey, our love is everywhere. Oh. <laughs> I never heard of such a thing. Now I'll I'll talk to you later, Viv. Well, Walter, your friend has done it again. Arthur, what's he done now? Well, Viv wants to get married right away, and Arthur said absolutely not. He's calling it off? No, he's just postponing it. You see, since he's a doctor, he gave Vivian the blood uh, test himself. And he found out she has low blood sugar. <laughs> he wants to put off the wedding until she raises it to a marriageable level. <laughs> You're kidding. And that's not all. On top of everything, he charged her $10 for the blood. <laughs> was recorded on tape before a live audience. And the I need your help. Arthur, will you go home? Paul and I are having a battle that makes yours and Vivian's look like a pajama party. So, Walter, you gotta help me. Where's your Epsom salt? Now Vivian won't even talk to me. You're lucky. I called her three times and she wouldn't answer. And she called me to tell me she was so upset she needed a tranquilizer. So, I rushed right over. She took the tranquilizer and slammed the door in my face. I got so angry I banged the door. <laughs> Ten minutes ago, that was the delicate hand of a skilled surgeon. If that swelling doesn't go down, I'm liable to lose two appendectomies and a gallbladder. Arthur. Well, gallbladders don't go on treason. <laughs> oh, hi there, Marty. Try it out loud, Marty. What are you looking for? Albert's hammer. <laughs> what are you going to use it on? The justice of the peace who married us. <laughs> How do you like that, Arthur? For five years, I bury my feelings, or I won't hurt the woman I love. And then you come along and talk about Agnes, and you hurt Vivian's feelings. And I talk about Albert, and I hurt Maud's feelings. Take it from me, Arthur. Do yourself a favor, and don't get married again. Be married again? No chance of that, old buster. No more marriage for old Arthur Q. Harmon. Arthur Q. Harmon? <laughs> for Quince, my father was fond of tropical fruits. <laughs> Well, I hope that's something of Albert she's banging on. <laughs> what are you doing? Can't you tell? I'm building a stairway to the stars. <laughs> Come on, give me that. You'll hurt yourself. Now look, Maud, about the house. I don't want to hear another word about the house. There. Now, what's this sign for? Our front lawn. <laughs> Daisy, we're not selling this house. You hate this house. We will sell this house. Are you trying to make me feel guilty? Okay, then sell the house for all I care. I'll even help you drive the stake in. You'll help me drive the stake in? <laughs> okay, well, fool. And the two of us will live in Transylvania. And we will become Dracula. 
I'm married to a five foot ten suitcase. I will put the sign out myself. I'm the real estate person. I will sell the house. Oh, oh, Mom, I gotta talk to you. I'm so upset. Oh, I'm so sorry, Dave. Oh, thank you, Mom. Now that we've had our little chat and you're feeling better, go home. <laughs> Arthur, Arthur, I think it's time we had this. What happened to my baby's hand? I punched your door. <gasps> right in the knocker. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, let Vivian kiss it and make it better. Is that better? You know that does feel better? Oh. Period. Unless his wife is still alive. <laughs> Frankly, Walter, I don't care for your attitude. <laughs> And a fat lot of it being witty and debonair did me. And speaking of fat, look at your duck. <laughs> a fine evening this turned out to be. A vindictive woman and a fat duck. <laughs> well, Arthur and Vivian are gone. They'll probably never speak to each other again. Do you see what you did? What I did? Come on, Maud, get off my back. Vivian had a perfect right to be fed up. Oh, come on. Vivian was behaving completely irrationally and stupid, which she caught from you. Vivian's reaction was perfectly natural. Vivian's getting hysterical over Agnes was perfectly natural? That's right. It was perfectly natural. Oh. Like the way I felt about this house when I moved in. I mean, Arthur's just going to have to realize that I'm there with Vivian until they can work Walter. out their problems together. Walter, what about? This house. What house? This house. Your feelings about this house. Nothing. It was nothing. <laughs> Look, this is a marvelous house. I mean, it's got a great floor plan, a lot of windows, a uh, nice neighborhood more than the garbage picked up twice a week. You haven't told me what you <laughs> 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 Not until you tell me what you got. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a man. A crisis in our marriage, and all you can think about is your duck. <laughs> Crisis! It's just that I resented moving into this house. That's all. Now, come on, I'm hungry. Give me my duck. <laughs> Walter, you have lived in this house for five years and hated it? I don't hate it, Maud. It's just that before me, you lived in this house with another husband, Albert. So it finally comes out. <laughs> five years in this house, and you've been constantly thinking, Albert, Albert, Albert. Maud, believe me, Look, it used to bother me at first, but it doesn't anymore. Now the name Albert never enters my mind. Never. Oh, Walter. If I could believe that, I'd be the, I'd be the happiest wife in the world. Then you are the happiest wife in the world. Really, Walter? I swear it, Albert. <laughs> It was a mistake. It was a mistake. I didn't mean that. I mean, that just came out like that's what I... Look, what are you doing with that duck? I'm getting rid of it so it won't remind you of Albert. <laughs> Lord, everything else in this house may have belonged to Albert, but that duck was mine. <laughs> I don't want to hear about the house. You obviously hate the house. Lord, you're misunderstanding everything. So I happened to mention Albert's house. Did I say one word about Albert's chair, about Albert's desk? About Albert's rugs? Ah, I know what's bothering you. And it is not Albert. <laughs> you, you engage me in repartee and you will be cut to pieces. Listen, I gave away a bird that could ad lib better than you. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah? <laughs> you really cut her to pieces with that one. <laughs> I will never understand women. There's only one woman I ever really understood. And that was my Agnes. Well, Arthur? In 15 years, I only once heard her say an unkind thing, and that was to a dentist whose Masonic ring was pressing against her nose. Arthur, Arthur nobody really cares about Agnes. You see, she, she, that, she puts down everything I have to say. Arthur, so help me. You know, Vivian, there is something I have to get in the kitchen. What? You. <laughs> okay, Vivian, what gives? Well, what am I going to do with him? You heard him out there. What Look, am I going to do with you? You are my best friend, and I know that I have to calm you down and help you with this matter, or you're going to hate yourself in the morning. And Vivian, the way you look in the morning, I wouldn't push my luck. <laughs> All right, it's that wife of his, Agnes. Agnes? 
Agnes has been dead for eight years. I know, I know, and I could kill her for that. <laughs> he won't stop talking about her. I'm competing with a woman who was perfect in every way. Yeah, except for her health, Vivian. <laughs> I bought him a tie to go with that suit he's I wearing. I noticed it the minute he walked in. Excellent taste. He's wearing a tie Agnes gave him. And it's atrocious. <laughs> but the suit is in excellent taste. Oh, Viv, come on now. Honey, you have to realize you are the first woman that Arthur has been seriously attracted to since Agnes. I mean, you have to give him a little time to get over his romantic fantasies of loving her and get down to the harsh realities of loving you. <laughs> Really think so, of huh? course. Now, come on, honey. Do he mentions Agnes every once in a while? I want you to go back in there and show Arthur how cheerful and smiling you can be. I'll try. Okay? Now, remember, I want you to be cheerful and smiling and cute and perky. Now, cancel the cute and perky. We'll go with the cheerful. <laughs> Get the broccoli. Uh, I tell you, Walter, I never dreamed that our first fight would be like this. I thought at least it would be a little... Love and understanding. Okay, look, so you had a little misunderstanding, but don't ruin your entire evening. She's going to come around. Uh. Just be your old, witty, debonair self. Oh, well, God. Come on, Arthur, do it for me. I can't. I... Oh, come on. Your old, debonair self. Huh? <laughs> witty, debonair. <laughs> I'll do it. After all, I got quite an investment in that woman. I got 10 pounds of prime beef starting in a frozen food locker. <laughs> Hold it right there. Standing there with a duck in your hand. You remind me of a poem. Summer, winter, spring, and fall. Walter, that sign stays out on the lawn. Only if this house is moved. Walter, don't oh, start. Oh, Bob, you're not going to believe this. Arthur and I are engaged. We're going to be married. Oh, Bobby, that's so wonderful. Uh, Vivian. Uh, uh, Vivian. <laughs> Arthur, I understand. Congratulations are in order. I don't know. Vivian and I were in the uh, kitchen and we were talking there and then she seemed to you pick mean, up. You really are getting married. Yes, yes. I, I, I can hardly believe it. No, I can't either. <laughs> I can't either. Oh, Walter, they really are going to get married. I hope it wasn't something I said. <laughs> we're actually engaged. <laughs> I don't know where I got the nerve to ask you. <laughs> well, it looks like the four of us will be next door neighbors. <laughs> next door neighbors? Well, naturally, we're going to move into my house. It's bigger than your house. It has everything we need. Oh, well, of course, if, if you really feel that way. Come along. I, thought... I want to show you something. I want to show you something I have never shown you before. You are going to love Agnes' sewing room. I haven't touched a thing except to oil the machine every year on our anniversary. Come on. Oh, honey. Is that what I did to you? It wasn't that bad. Albert didn't own a sewing machine. <laughs> oh, honey, I am so sorry. But I was pretty stupid. Oh. Seeing Arthur and Vivian makes me realize how lucky we are. Maud, it's not a house or furniture that make a home. We could live in a tent in the backyard. We could live in the garage, any place. And it'd be our home because we'd be there together. Oh, honey. You're right. You're right, Walter. And Walter, we've been together all over this house. We fought in that corner. And we fought in that we corner. We fought upstairs. And we fought in the basement. We threw dishes in the kitchen. And we threw phonograph records in the den. We threw suitcases out the window. And you flushed my eyelashes down the jar. <laughs> Oh, honey. Honey, our love is everywhere. Oh. <laughs> I never heard of such a thing. Now, I'll, I'll talk to you later, Viv. Well, Walter, your friend has done it again. Arthur? What's he done now? Well, Viv wants to get married right away, and Arthur said absolutely not. He's calling it off? No, he's just postponing it. You see... My face. 
I got so angry, I banged the door. <laughs> Ten minutes ago, that was the delicate hand of a skilled surgeon. If that swelling doesn't go down, I'm liable to lose two appendectomies and a gallbladder. Oh, sir. Well, gallbladders don't grow on treason. <laughs> oh, hi there, Marty. Brian, how loud, boy? What are you looking for? Albert's hammer. <laughs> what are you going to use it on? The justice of the peace who married us. <laughs> how do you like that, Arthur? For five years, I buried my feelings, or I won't hurt the woman I love. And then you come along and talk about Agnes, and you hurt Vivian's feelings. And I talk about Albert, and I hurt Maud's feelings. Take it from me, Arthur. Do yourself a favor, and don't get married again. Be married again? There's no chance of that, old buster. No more marriage for old Arthur Q. Harmon. Arthur Q. Harmon? <laughs> for Quince, my father was fond of tropical fruits. <laughs> Well, I hope that's something of Albert she's banging on. What are you doing? Can't you tell? I'm building a stairway to the stars. <laughs> Mark, give me that. You'll hurt yourself. Now, look, Mort, about the house. I don't want to hear another word about the house. There. Now, what's this sign for? Our front lawn. Oh. Are you crazy? We're not selling this house. You hate this house. We will sell this house. Are you trying to make me feel guilty? Okay, then sell the house for all I care. I'll even help you drive the steak in. You'll help me drive the steak in? <laughs> okay, well, well. And the two of us will live in Transylvania. And we will become Dracula. I'm married to a five foot ten suitcase. I will put the sign out myself. I'm the real estate person. I will sell the house. Oh, oh, Mom, i got to talk to you. I'm so upset. Oh, I'm so sorry, Dave. Oh, uh, thank you, Mom. Now that we've had our little chat and you're feeling better, go home. <laughs> oh, you're not putting that phone in, Mom! Come here! Arthur! Was that you, Arthur? Arthur! All right, Arthur. Arthur, I think it's time we had this... What happened to my baby's hand? I punched your door. <gasps> right in the knocker. Oh, oh, <laughs> Let Vivian kiss it and make it better. Is that better? You know, that does feel better? Oh. It really does. Oh, oh Vivian, with a woman like you around, who needs Epsom salts? What do you mean? I do, I do, I really do. Oh. Arthur, we might as well stop seeing each other. How can you say that, Vivian? Well, because it's true. How can we have a meaningful relationship when you can't even bury Agnes? Vivian. If I could find her, I'd bury her. 